Hi guys, the problem with punctuation and special commas was always a problem for many students. I have prepared a small tutorial that can help you to overcome this issue. And please do not forget to press subscribe button. I'd like to highlight the fact that making comma mistakes can affect your overall writing score. So, let's discuss comma rules right now. First of all, let's define when we need to place commas. First, we need commas to separate independent or dependent clauses, in other words, to join two, three or more sentences. Secondly, we need commas to separate items in a series or lists of words. They might be nouns, verbs, adjectives, phrases, clauses, and other words. Thirdly, we need them after transition signals. Pay attention. Thirdly, we need. Then, we need commas to set off appositives. We need them for participle clauses as well. And we place comma to set off quotation. And there are several additional rules which we will discuss later. However, in this video, we will mostly concentrate on basic rules. So, let's start with sentences. A sentence in English must have a subject and a verb. As you know, there can be several sentences joined together. They can be both independent and dependent. Let's first talk about independent ones. Two clauses in English cannot be joined with a simple comma. They can be joined either by means of semicolon or a comma with conjunction. Actually, there are three types of conjunctions – coordinating, subordinating, and relative. Coordinating conjunctions join two independent clauses, while subordinating ones join one dependent and one independent clause, where one clause, independent one, subordinates the other, dependent clause. You can remember coordinating conjunctions. The rest are subordinating. Coordinating conjunctions are fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. The most common among them are and and but. Let's look at these four sentences. Here we joined two independent clauses by means of and and but. Collecting is one of the most varied human activities and many psychologists find it fascinating. In the first sentence we have subject and verb collecting is. In the second one many psychologists find. Psychologist is subject, find is verb. Let's look at other sentences. They are also joined by means of but and and. Some people buy items cheaply in order to make profit, but there can be a psychological element as well. This approach is the most appropriate one, but I prefer the most difficult way to do it. Every person comes to the program with his or her own experience, and this might help them. In all these sentences, two independent clauses are joined by means of conjunctions. These are coordinating conjunctions with comma in front of them. Commas with subordinating conjunctions are placed differently. First, if a dependent sentence is placed after the independent one or main sentence, there is no need for comma. I will call you back when you come home. However, when we write a subordinating clause first, there should be a comma after this clause. When you come home, comma, I will call you back. The same rule is also applied to other subordinating conjunctions. Here is the list of these conjunctions. 
Let's look at some more examples. People are likely to feel unhappy if their dreams do not come true. No comma. But if we write like this, if dreams do not come true, comma, people are likely to feel unhappy. The same in the next example. The data is incomplete because some operations are still continuing. Because some operations are still continuing, comma, the data is incomplete. Secondly, we need commas to separate items in a series or lists of words. For example, nouns, verbs, adjectives, phrases, clauses, and other words. Let's look at this example. Such action will improve pupils' performance at all levels, particularly in science, mathematics, and languages. Here we have three items – science, mathematics, and languages. So, we should separate all of them with comma. Remember that we do not place comma if there are only two items in a list. Such action will improve pupils' performance at all levels, particularly in science and mathematics. We have only two items, so there is no need for comma. The same rule is applied for OR and BUT. However, with regards to comma before AND, when there are more than two items in a list, this is a bit debatable question. So you can put it or you cannot put it. It's up to you. The proponents of Oxford School prefer to write a comma. But again, it's up to you whether to write it or not. Next, we need to place comma when we write transition signals in a sentence. For example, we write them at the beginning. However, some people might argue that homeschooling has many positive sides for students. Furthermore, some students find studying online much cheaper than traditional way of studying. Firstly, people work via the internet owing to its flexibility. We will not discuss transition signals in this video, we can devote another one to them. However, remember that some transition signals might join two clauses or sentences. In this case, we should place a, a semicolon before a transition signal and a comma after it. This happens because transition signals are actually not conjunctions. That's why we join two sentences with a semicolon. We also need commas to separate a positive. An appositive is a noun or a noun phrase that is next to another noun, to rename it or to describe it in another way. It should be separated with commas. For example, Paris, comma, the capital of France, comma, is one of the most visited cities in the world. Rex, my dog, was a small puppy when I first saw him. Instead of a positive, you may use a relative clause as well. For example, Paris, which is the capital of France, is one of the most visited cities in the world. Here, instead of a positive, we used a relative clause by adding a relative pronoun which. Relative clauses are written by means of relative pronouns. Be careful, sometimes you need to place commas, sometimes not. It's up to the meaning of the sentence. If a relative clause just gives an extra explanation, in this case you need a comma. This relative clause is called non-essential or non-restricted in some cases. But if it's essential clause, there is no need for comma. Let's compare these two sentences. The woman who is staying near the hospital looks familiar to me. Jessica, who is an outstanding student in our class, passed the exam with distinction. In the first sentence, we don't know the woman. So, the relative clause is essential. It's essential to describe her. In the second sentence, we just give an extra information about Jessica. If we remove this part of a sentence, the sentence is still meaningful for us. For participle clauses, we also need a comma when 
A participle clause refers to something in a sentence or to the whole sentence. Let's look at this example. George accomplished the task applying the basic rules of geometry. Here, applying refers to the whole action of the sentence. Look and remember how we place comma with quotation marks. You should also place commas while using despite or in spite of. They are actually synonyms of although, though, and even though. While although, though, and even though must join two sentences, after despite and in spite of, we can use a simple noun or gerund. Let's look at these examples. Although or even though John is a rich man, he doesn't like to spend much money. But if we use the same sentence with despite, we will say like this. Despite or in spite of his wealth or in spite of being rich, John doesn't like to spend much money. We can write vice versa. John doesn't like to spend much money despite or in spite of his wealth or being rich. The same rule is applied for because of, due to, owing to. While their synonyms because, as, and since are used with a sentence, because of, due to, owing to are used with a noun or gerund. Jane helped us because she is a kind person. But because of her kindness, Jane helped us. We don't use any comma with that before or after it, whether it joins two sentences or it's used in a relative clause. Well, in this video I tried to introduce the most basic rules of punctuation, especially commas, to facilitate your writing section in IELTS. If you have additional questions, feel free to write them in comments, and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel.